When I say the name Easy Cat, Easy Cat probably, if you think of this little dongle with the composite and S video and RCA jacks hanging out of it that you might have used back in the day to record your Xbox 360 for Call of Duty montages or capture DVD or VHS tapes from. Instead, we have this thing that looks like an Elgato HD60S, almost. Turns out, while not available typically on Amazon or normal places that you'd buy things, EasyCap is still going strong as a brand over on AliExpress, where they have a wide gamut of capture card options, all with their own doses of contradicting and misinformation and confusing model numbers that, honestly, I don't blame anyone for not wanting to search through because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense most of the time. But we're diving in because people kept insisting I check out this one. This is the EasyCap GameLink RAW, aka the EasyCap 321, and it's a 4K slash 1080p 120 capture card. That's actually not terrible. And it's only 60 bucks. Okay, I said they're not active on Amazon. This specific capture card is literally on Amazon available now. But it wasn't when I purchased it. I had to purchase it on AliExpress. But it's available for 60 bucks. And every time I talk about the budget under a $100 capture cards, everyone kept telling me I had to check this one out. And I didn't really want to deal with AliExpress capture cards because... <laughs> It's just a mess and I don't recommend like people who are newbies and on lower budgets really try to dig through that because if you mess up, you're stuck with it. Uh, but this one's actually pretty cool. It's a it's a unique entry, I will say, um, and that will serve some markets well and some maybe not so much. Physically, like I said, we're looking at basically the kind of soft shell, uh, but otherwise same kind of shape as the Elgato HG60S capture cards. You got your HDMI input and output, like free pass through on one side and then a USB type A port that uses an A to A cable to connect to your computer and a 3.5 millimeter line in. Now this is only HDMI 1.4. So despite the weird Elgato knockoff marketing that they use where they just like Photoshop Elgato's marketing photos and then they say, congrats, you've got a real 4K capture card. That's reassuring. Uh, this one actually does some cool stuff. So specs wise, we're looking at, like I said, HDMI 1.4, which means you can, you can input and pass through up to 4K 30, 1440p 60, and 1080p up to 120 FPS. So no 144 hertz at 1440p, no 240 hertz at 1080p 120. But the cool thing is, all of those formats I just li listed, 1080p 120, 1440p 60, and 4K 30, can also be captured, which is actually kind of nice. You can get YUI2, which is 422 chroma subsampling, at 1080p 60 and 720p 60. You can get RGB 444 chroma subsampling at 720p 60 and 1080p 30, and then you get NV12 at 1080p 120, 1440p 60 and 4K 30 capture as well. One of the specs parts on the AliExpress page, even though it says all three units are the same, says 4K 60 HDR pass through. Uh, however, it doesn't say that in the manual and it is th this is not the case. There is no HDR support on this particular model. So you are able to plug it in and play at 1440p 60 or 1080p 120, pass it through and capture those frame rates back as well within OBS or whatever which is pretty nice and it's uncompressed video quality looks pretty nice in terms of like documentation it comes with a very detailed manual but the screenshots are black and white and almost impossible to see and read which is a lot of fun uh, <laughs> there is a lot of format documentation though so huge props to them they have full tables with the inputs and output resolutions and the chroma subsampling modes like they uh, someone there has been watching my videos and i greatly appreciate that this is a uvc capture card which means it's plug and play in windows mac and linux and it's supposed to be max mac compatible in my experience on the M1 Mac Mini, I was only getting up to 720p 30 max, and I believe it was MJPEG with some super high latency. Uh, so that was disappointing. However, on Windows, it works fine. And on Linux, it works fine, even exposing 120 FPS in OBS on Linux, which was nice to see. The weird quirk with the specs and stuff here is that there is no scaler built in. So if you put in 1440p and then you set it to 1080p in OBS Studio, it'll say, please set to the appropriate resolution because it can't actually scale it, which isn't a big deal for most people who are just using one or two capture cards, but if you're on a laptop or you're doing a big multi-capture card kind of thing for like sports broadcasting or something, you often want to scale on the capture card or in the driver itself so you're using less bandwidth and that is not possible here. So that's kind of annoying to see because most capture cards these days don't struggle with that. Or at least they lie to you about it if they do. I say there's no scaler, but there's kind of caveat, a caveat to that. And we're going to get talk about that here in the retro section. Latency wise, we're looking at about 50 milliseconds of latency, which is not the lowest I've tested by any stretch, but it is actually pretty low and fairly competitive. This means you're going to have a much easier time syncing up your audio coming through different sources and your video feed. It's going to be nice and snappy, not going to be quick enough to play from the preview, especially when you consider OBS's 
variable preview latency, but I think it's going to be pretty solid for using with cameras or keeping audio in sync with separate audio interfaces or whatnot. And if you have concerns with keeping it in sync, it does have a line in port. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of software to control it, so I didn't really mess with it here, but it is an option available to you. In terms of retro capture, we have some kind of quirks going on. So if you put in 480p from the RetroTINK 2X or the 5X, uh, it works, but there's no native 480p option. You have to set it to 1080p for it to work, which is weird since it won't scale anything else, uh, but it comes out at 1080p. So you're probably getting some wonky slow scaling or something in there. Uh, maybe not the best choice for 480p capture specifically. However, uh, the RetroTINK 5X works all the way through up to 1200p. That works fine. However, 1440p just totally derps up and doesn't look right. The open source scan converter, on the other hand, running the Super Nintendo through it looks great. Uh, it works fine all the way up to 5X. So I don't know why capture cards these days are so compatible, but not liking 1920 by 1440. I was hoping a non-name brand card might be a little bit better in that regard, but unfortunately it is not. Quality wise and stuff, it seems to work fine. I didn't have any major desync issues. Um, I did have some issues on my front panel port where the audio was getting kind of choppy, but otherwise it looks fine. Uh, and on my rear ports, I had no such issue. I don't like that it uses USB Type-A, that's ridiculous, that actually costs more from what I've been told to use, and is completely out of spec, and just should be stopped. I wish these knockoff companies would knock that off. Uh, but otherwise, like, it looks great, runs fine, I'm dropping it, didn't get too hot, didn't have any, I, I was surprised by this, like, a lot of people were singing the praises of these Easy Cap cards, and I was just like, Easy Cap, really? That's what you want me to try. Uh, yeah, looks pretty good. I may try out the other ones. These are ones that I'm obviously not getting sent for review. I'm ordering myself, so I only have so much budget to keep throwing at these knockoff capture cards, but I am pretty impressed with this one. Game Link Raw is kind of a silly name, but it does provide uncompressed captures, and I think for 60 bucks, it would be hard to go wrong with this. In terms of value per dollar, uh, compared to the current $60 champion, which is the EVGA XR1 Lite, the EVGA takes the cake just because it supports HDMI 2.0, so you get all the new respects and things like that. It depends. I paid 53 bucks for this on AliExpress, so if that $7 is worth it to you and you can wait for shipping and it's still that price on AliExpress, I guess this runs out for $7 cheaper, but it depends on what you're doing, because if you're wanting to play at 4K or 1440p144 or whatever, you can't do that with this, but you can with the XR1 Lite. So honestly, it's one of those things where I think Generally speaking, you're better off going with a more reputable name that you can get for sure warranties through and stuff, such as EVGA, um, when it's an already better spec card for the price. But if you're wanting something different or you want for sure support of something that I listed here, you have the option available to you. Product links will be in the description below. As always, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Full write up on the website with latency charts will be linked below. Uh, join our Discord, discord.gg slash evilsfox. And remember, be kind, rewind.